Oh my god, I'm so excited because today we are going to do the vampire video. And you know what? Soren is my favorite planeswalker ever. He is so hot, oh my god. In fact, not really hot because it's vampire, so it's cold. But if he is cold, he couldn't be hot, no? You know what I mean, no? You can do it now, we are rolling. Are you sure this looks like a vampire? Yes, yes, very good, perfect. Yep. What's up kitchen table wizards, what's up deck brewers from all over the world. My name is Bram and I am not the only world famous Bram, you know. Now there's another Bram called Bram Stoker and he made this small movie called Dracula. So, you already see it coming, we are going to do a great segue into unicorns! Here we go. Hey, yeah. Here we go. Okay, what the hell just happened? No, 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 no vampire unicorns, just vampires this time. Okay, the reason why I'm doing this uh, vampire tribe this time is that I got a suggestion from two other magic content creators. One is the fast talking YouTube guy called Trainer Trey and the other one is this cute Russian girl that does MTG altars. Her name is Victoria and you can find her on Instagram right here. They're both really big fans of vampires and I also brewed a very cool vampire list for them. So before we start, I also want to thank our partner Card Market, the best place to find bloody vampires on Magic Cards. Do check out the link in the description if you're not a Card Market user yet. And this time I'm also giving away our first 10 euro Card Market voucher to a random subscriber that had commented in one of my videos. The winner is smoke dogs so smoke dogs you can have a look in the description how to contact us and we will send you a code for your 10 euro voucher and if you also want to win a 10 euro voucher or maybe have a chance to win a 10 euro voucher you can subscribe to my channel and just put something in the comments maybe you like my video maybe you want to give me some feedback maybe you have some good ideas for other decks it can be a little bit of everything and when we get to 500 subscribers I will give out another voucher or maybe two who knows. Today's deck is around 35 dollars or 30 euros and it's mainly because of one card that makes it a little bit more expensive. The card is called Soren, it's a planeswalker and if you remove that card then the deck will be around 20 dollars or 20 euros more or less. No! Not Soren! I'll pay for it! Today's vampire list is two colors. It's black and white and we play eight swamps and six planes. We also play a bunch of dual lands. We play four Forsaken Sanctuary and four Scoured Barrens. The last one gives you also a little bit of life and you will notice later in the deck deck that this will be very important. I also play one Radiant Fountain a land that also gives me life and one Baron more. Yes, I already talked about him. The Planeswalker in the deck is called Soren, the Imperious Bloodlord from Core 20. And it's a three mana Planeswalker with four loyalty. It can make your vampires gain lifelink and death touch and have a counter on it. Or you can sacrifice a vampire and you can deal some damage and gain some life. Or for a minus three, you can get a vampire creature card from your hand into the battlefield. So a great planeswalker to start this deck with. I play 28 vampires in this deck. Let's start with two one drops. I play one flying dustborn sky marcher and one indulgent aristocrat who had too much wine. Or is it blood wine? I don't know. 
Both of them are accompanied by a Bishop Soldier and an Adanto Vanguard. Two vampire soldiers, one of them gains life and the other one hangs around because you can pay life and make it indestructible. In black for the two drops I also play a Blood Throne Vampire. You can sacrifice other creatures to have it gain plus two plus two. And a Cordial Vampire. Hello. And when, whenever a Cordial Vampire or another Vampire dies, you can put a plus one plus one counter on each Vampire you control. So both of them together are already a combo if you have some other Vampires out. I also play two Legion Lieutenant. Now you might say, Bram, why do you don't play four Legion Lieutenants? It's a really strong card. Well, this is a casual deck channel. I want to make a cheap budget deck for you, which is a lot of fun to play. And that's why I play a lot of one and two offs. You should really try this sort of magic out. It's really the most fun you can have playing magic. Some other cards that I play in the two drop slot are Tight Drinker, also a lifelink vampire with extort and Cruel Celebrant. Whenever a Cruel Celebrant or another creature or planeswalker you control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. This is also a really strong creature in the deck. That's why I also play two of them. Straight out of Queen of the Damned we have Alaya, disguised as a bloodthirsty aerialist and hello, wow. Drana's Emissary. You might have noticed that there's a little combo going on. The Emissary makes the Bloodthirsty Aerialist bigger each turn while draining your opponent. Two other vampires in the tree drop slot are the Inspiring Cleric. You can see him here trying to read the receipt of the Bloody Mary on a sword. And then there is Forerunner of the Legion. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for another vampire card and put it on top. And when another vampire enters the battlefield, target creature also gets plus one, plus one. So two good cards in the deck. Next up is Mavren Fane Dusk Apostle. This is a legendary vampire for three mana. And when, whenever one or more non-token vampires attack, create a 1-1 one, one vampire creature token with lifelink. Then I also play two flying vampires. One is called the Sadistic Sky Marcher, and of course it also has lifelink. And the Sky March Bloodletter is also a 2-2 flying that when it enters the battlefield, target opponent loses one life and you gain one life. And one vampire that loves that you gain life is the Cliffhaven Vampire, because whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one life. In the four drop slot, we also have the Paladin of the Bloodstained. He brings along a small little lifelinking vampire token and the Sanctum Seeker is a 3, 4, and whenever a vampire you control attacks, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. On the top of the curve we play 4, 5 drops. Two of them are bishops, although I don't really expect to see them in church on Sunday. Say what? One of them is called Bishop of Rebirth and the other one is called Bishop of the Bloodstained. The Bishop of Rebirth gets back other vampires from their graveyard to the battlefield when it attacks. And the other one, when it enters the battlefield, target opponent loses one life for each vampire you control. And that can be a lot because we play a bunch of vampires. Bloodlord of Vasgoth is a mythic vampire with bloodthirst 3 and whenever you cast a vampire creature it also gains bloodthirst 3. Bloodthirst is an older ability. When an opponent is dealt damage this turn, this creature enters the battlefield with 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. So when you get some damage done, and if you play a vampire afterwards with the Bloodlord out, it will get huge immediately. The Champion of Dusk looks like he's a bit lost in a library somewhere. <laughs> and whenever it enters the battlefield, you draw X cards and you lose X life where X is the number of vampires you control. But don't worry, you'll have plenty of life, so the life loss isn't that bad. 
The last vampire in the deck apparently has three arms and a problem with her neck. It's called Voldaren Pariah and when you sacrifice three other creatures you can transform the Voldaren Pariah. Then it will become Abolisher of Bloodlines. A 5-6 flying vampire and when it transforms target opponent sacrifices three creatures. So a very strong card that you can easily activate because you will have a lot of vampires or vampire tokens out there. So these were the vampires, these were the lands. You already seen the biggest part of the deck, but I do play some support cards. I play one talisman of hierarchy just to help a little bit with the mana fixing. I also play one legion's landing it's a great card to play on turn one because it gives you a vampire and later you can transform it into Adanto the first fort and then it's a land and also a token generator. For three mana you can create a white vampire creature token with lifelink. Speaking about tokens I also included one Queen's Commission and one Call to the Feast. Both cards also create vampire tokens with lifelink. For the removal I really want to be on flavor and I included one go for the throat and I also wanted to have a flexible removal spell in there that wasn't too expensive. These spark looked like a great option in this deck. I don't play a lot of draw spells but I do want it to include one return from extinction because the only creature types we are playing are vampires and for two mana you can get two vampires from your graveyard back to your hand. To finish the deck I play one tribal enchantment from Modern Horizons called Etchings of the Chosen. You will of course choose vampire as a creature type. All your vampires will get plus one plus one and you can sacrifice a vampire to give target creature indestructible until end of turn. So this was the vampire deck. A lot of one-offs, a lot of two-offs, but super fun to play. Do check it out, do try it. And now I will head into the power rankings. Compared to the other decks I brewed, this definitely merits a power of eight. It's a cool deck for a beginner player, but due to all the life gain triggers, it is quite complex. So complexity, a seven but it is also a quite consistent deck. You will play more offensive than defensive with this deck, but I do find it also a lot of fun to play and it's some good value for money, even if you don't include Sorin. No, but I won't include Sorin. Okay, Kami, you can include Sorin. Let's, let's head on to the metagame review. The deck is quite good against aggro and midrange deck I gave it an 8. It's a little bit less powerful against control and combo decks because it doesn't have a lot of counter spells or disruption so therefore a 6 against those two types. To finish the deck I want to give you some suggestions about other vampires that are flying around in the magic universe. First the Sangir vampire. This is maybe not the strongest vampire but this was for me the original vampire from magic. Here you see the original card and then they made this nice drawing by Kev Walker. I like both designs. So a nice nostalgic Sangir vampire to start the maybe board. Next up we have the Bloodline Keeper. It's a 3-3 flying and when you tap it you can put a black vampire creature token with flying onto the battlefield. I already found this a very strong ability but for one black mana you can transform it if you have five or more vampires and then it will transform into the Lord of Lineage. A 5-5 five, five flying vampire that gives other vampires plus two plus two and you can still tap it to put a vampire creature token into play. So really strong card but it is a little bit pricey as well so that's why I didn't include it. Two other strong vampires are the Vampire Nighthawk and the Captivating Vampire. The last slide I put in, maybe a little bit to please my intern Camille. These are two 
Planeswalkers, two versions of Soren. One is called the Solemn Visitor and one is called the Vengeful Bloodlord. And they are both great additions to your collection, if you ask me. What? Two different Sorin? Where? So this was it everyone, thanks for watching. I will be back soon with another deck deck. And remember, always keep it casual.